Hello everyone. It is it's July something. I don't I don't even know what I know it's Tuesday. I don't know what day it is cuz if you follow me, you know I'm supposed to be at the lake this week. I'm supposed to be on vacation. But uh we had some things in the family going on and um we uh I had the car packed. The boat hooked the boat hooked up. We got a pontoon boat. And we were ready to. We were an hour away from leaving, and um, my brother calls and said his wife came down with COVID. COVID. So <laughs> we thought, well, we better not go, you know, because it was just my son and I this year. A lot of times, um, my whole family, you know, there was like twenty some people, but you know, it's you know how families get. They get so busy and things going on and. Um, so this year was just the four of us, which is kind of weird, but, um, but yeah, so she, my sister-in-law has COVID and, uh, she's really sick, poor thing. She, she'll be okay, but I mean, she's, you know, and my brother had it the week before, so we were waiting for him to get over it so we could go. And, um, so anyway, it didn't work out. So, um, my feet should be in the lake right now. And it, they're not, so. But I'm back in the studio, so you know that's not all bad. And I think it's it's raining here and it's raining there, so you know sometimes you know maybe it's a, a blessing in disguise that we didn't go. Um, but anyway, so yeah, so no lake photos this week, <laughs> unless there's unless there's a lake out in my backyard. There's supposed to be uh, we're supposed to have a lot of rain here in Cincinnati, but I don't know. Today it all went going south of us, so. Anyway, so here I am. No boating this week. <laughs> anyway, so I wanted to do another doodle bowl. Um, so this is how it looks now. This is Bisqueware. This is B-Mix 5 with Grog. Um, I try to smooth it down with sandpaper. I buy these... Um, Little diamond core sanding pads. Uh, this one's a, this one's a sixty. These things aren't cheap though. When I first bought them, I thought, um, I thought they were going to be a lot bigger. <laughs> I mean, when I got, it, I was like, wow, because I think these are like, I think this is like thirty dollars. I can't remember what I what I spent on it, but I was like shocked when this little tiny sanding pad came. But um, but I have a uh, a one twenty. They tell you on the side here. 120 and I got a 60. I couldn't spend any more. Like if you get four of them, they're like a hundred dollars, which just seems crazy. And I know some people, um, you can go to Harbor Freights and things and get diamond sandy pads. So I am going to, I am going to try that because I, I mean, those are just expensive, but they wash out good and they supposedly last forever. I've, I've only had these about six months, I guess. But anyway, because the the clay is got grog in it. Um, it is kind of rough, so I, I definitely um, try to sand that down with some water. I wet it first, and then I sand it down um, to smooth it down a little bit. And um, and I use I use the B mix with the grog because I not only throw on the wheel but I hand build. So uh, my studio is not that large, and I. I don't want to try to keep a bunch of different clays and try to keep them separate. The clay with grog, the clay without grog. Because right now I have, um, I love, as you know, I love standard 266, that dark brown clay. And I wasn't able to get that the last time. So I have Kentucky's Brown Bear, which is fine too. Um, so I've been using that. And it's hard, you know, to go back from the brown and the white, the brown and the white. Cause I got to clean my whole wheel and my table where I hand build and then my I got my slab roller um, over here so you got to change out the canvas mat that you know so it's a pain and I do have some porcelain too so I'm actually gonna use up but the, the porcelain I have left um, I do like um, I do like the hand build with that oh you can tell people who um, some potters if you watch them throw and they throw and it's just like whoo I mean they just stretch it and it's probably porcelain or um, and some people throw with really uh, wet clay and um, and if you throw really fast you know that's not a problem if you're trying to throw a big bowl 
and you're working it a little more, the wetter clay, you know, your walls will collapse. So anyway, so the, the, so the clay with the grog, um, it's nice for hand building and for wheel throwing. You don't have all the S cracks. It, it just, you know, it holds up better. And then I actually like the grog in it. In fact, I, um, I don't know who this, I'm, I'm trying to find this one potter that I bought some little tiny pieces from. And I noticed, um, he's got a lot of grog in there, but it's not just normal grog. Like, you know, you can buy grog and other materials and add it in there, but you know, you've got to make sure what you're adding in there isn't going to explode in the kiln because if you ever use, um, plaster molds or anything, you have to be really careful that a chunk of plaster does not get mixed in with your clay because it will explode in the kiln. So if you ever use, you know, if I got, I've got a bunch of plaster molds, but I, anymore, I prefer to make my molds out of, um, clay. Um, I just, I just bisque it. I don't glaze fire it. Um, that way if it's just bisque, it absorbs the moisture more. So when you drape your clay over it for hand building, it will absorb the moisture and it'll retain the shape quicker and it'll release quicker if you just have a, a bisque mold. Um, but yeah, just, you know. I do that all the time. If you find a really neat uh, pie pan or something, um, or any type of neat bowl mold, and you just want to make a drape mold out of it, uh, just make it thicker, you know, than normal. But anyway, I'm getting off the subject here. I'm supposed to be doing doodle bowls. <laughs> but if you have any questions, you know, let me know. I always answer them. I answer how, as much as I can, you know, what I know. I, uh, Never went to a, a school for this. I'm pretty much self-taught. I um, I learned by online classes. Um, there's something called the Ceramic School and a Ceramics Congress or something. There's a there's a couple of them, and then just online classes and um, YouTube videos and books. I have a lot of books and DVDs, and I kind of swamped myself with all that. And you learn from doing it, you know, and watching other people and stuff. So, um. So, you know, I help as much as I can, answer as much as I can. So let's do a just doodable. Um, I'll lower you down here so you can see, you can see what I'm doing. Okay, let's see. There we go. And I'll try not to drop the phone today. <laughs> and I know the words are backwards. I uh, always have to explain that. And that's just the way when you're videoing with a phone, I have not... From what I understand, you cannot reverse it um, when you're videoing with a phone. Some people try to do it with a tablet, um, I, but I tried it with a tablet, and that, and that works okay, too. But if I do a live, then I use my tablet and my phone. But anyway, it's okay. I have my underglazes over here, and if you're not familiar with me, watching my videos before I put my underglazes in a an old bead box um, it's a sealed container um, at first when I first um, started doing this I used to take out the grids and put um, silicone underneath each one and put them back in but then um, I found these on Amazon where they're already sealed so I don't have to uh, so I don't have to go through all that trouble and, um, and I like, I spray them a little bit with water when I close the lid and they never dry out. Um, but I do want them to dry out a little bit because they become more pigmented and a little bit stronger pigment, uh, more concentrated, and that helps the colors not to burn out. Um, I fire to cone five or five and a half, um, kind of depends how hot the kiln gets. And so the hotter you fire the underglazes, the more they'll burn out. Some people fire to cone 10, and a lot of the colors change then. But the colors will be much brighter and much truer at cone, like 04, uh, 010. So if you're, if you're using low fire clay, that's, that's really a lot different. Um, they stay much truer, and you don't have to put them on as thick. With firing a cone six, I really do try to put at least three coats on of the different colors um, so they don't fire out as much. But 
So I'm doing kind of a doodle bowl here. Um, I've got a bunch of stamps, and I it's it, it's kind of like mono printing, but I I tried doing some mono printing where you stamp on paper, newsprint, and then you transfer to the bowl. Um, but I didn't I don't know I I didn't care for that as much. I know there's people do some beautiful beautiful work like that but um, I don't know maybe if I mess with it more most of those kind of people they use um, a lot of slips and I actually have a bunch of slips sitting over here in containers so so I'm gonna go back and try that uh, one of these days but the the color of slips did not come out as bright for me as I wanted them to so I may buy some more stains mix them in with my colored slips and try and get them a little bit darker, um, but they don't burn out like this the uh, underglazes do. So that's why a lot of people, and they're a lot cheaper. They're a lot cheaper. So that's why a lot of people who um, do the mono printing and stuff use the colored slips. But um, but you got to do those on um, greenware. Uh, you cannot do them on bisqueware because they're they're uh, have a high clay base and it will crack off so anyway let's get some color on here let's see i think i'm gonna make this i did some if you remember i did some test tiles um with these colors there's oranges and yellows um i do like the darker ones too though this one has a whole bunch of different colors in there so, but I do like some of the, the lighter colors. So I think I'm going to um, put some yellows on here. Oh, that's really bright. That's a little brighter than what I, I think what I want. I think I'm going to go over it with. And then you can just add these colors and add layer upon layer. I hope everybody else is staying healthy. So many people have COVID. Jeez. At least it doesn't seem like it's um, as strong of a um, as strong of a variant as what we did have. It. I don't think it's you know I don't think too many people are dying from it. If you've had a vaccine those who choose not to get vaccinated um i guess can i guess it can still be pretty serious for them i i went ahead and got vaccinated i but you know to each to each his own let's see here um oh i got this pretty pretty turquoise here My son was so upset we weren't going to Cumberland. And uh, so we keep teasing him. Get your bathing suit on. We're going down to the boat. <laughs> it's time. It's 4.30. It's time for happy hour. <laughs> it's like, Mom, we're not at the lake. I said, well, it doesn't matter if we're at the lake the lake or not we can still pretend right we can have a home vacation oh. we only go once a year so that's why it's so sad that we're missing it but uh, you know it is it is what it is right So all these colors are going on here kind of dull and they will be brighter when it's fire. So you have to, you know, take that into effect, take that into consideration. Um, let's see, it's hard. 
you just want to add all these fun colors and then you run out of room on the bowl. <laughs> There's so many colors I want to add. Because I kind of want to um, bring some of the colors over on the lip too. I don't want the, let's see. can see these are one of my favorite bowls to paint I think I don't they take a lot longer and so you kind of I don't know you don't get you don't get your time back <laughs> when you sell them I guess eventually, if I got a bigger name for myself, I guess I would. But let's see here. So here's some old paint I had from last last time I did some painting with you all. I'm just gonna add a little bit of this yellow, orange here, orange, orange, Lisa, orange. I don't want it quite so bright though, so I'm going to add some orange and I'll go add a little bit of yellow. I can soften up the orange a little bit. Kind of an orangey red. I like that. Oh, look at that. It's running. It's running a little bit. I don't want it to run. So just dab it with a. Ah, oh, you're out of the screen, Lisa. You're out of the screen. I kind of like how it ran, though. That's kind of cool. I don't know. It's fun to make your own colors with underglazes. You can. Um, you know, mix them just like acrylics or watercolor and make your own. And then your piece is, you know, very unique. I think what I'm going to do is. I really like using the sponge. That's um, that's that's a lot of fun. I just filled these up. I filled some up last time I painted. And they're pretty full now. I just hope my black doesn't run out because I left my my jars of black gla underglaze at the uh, rec center where I teach. I keep forgetting to bring them home. I have a couple of these trays there that I use and uh, share with uh, some of the other people there. If you can see that kind of a cool effect that the sponge is doing I'm really liking that <laughs> hmm okay let's see what so I have an orange there so I definitely want to do a little bit of orange over here to even that out You ever, um, if you ever paint or, it, you know, sometimes what's like, like when I paint on here and I'm wiping my brush, sometimes 
what's left over here is so pretty. And um, like if you look, if you ever see a painter in a store getting paint, and he's got you know the, the painters with the white, they have the white overalls or the white pants, and they have this paint all over their pants. And I just think that looks. <laughs> I know I'm weird. I just think that looks so neat. <laughs> It's like that's a piece of artwork in itself, right? It tells a story. I love that. Hey, I'm really liking this sponge. Look at that. Look at all those cool, like, colors. Hmm. Let's see. What other colors should I do? I don't want to do anything too harsh, I don't think, in this one. I think I want them all to be kind of... Um, softer let's see here I put a little bit more orange in here sometimes it's hard because you mix colors you really like and then um, then you can't remember the next time exactly what you did, but but then it's all different. I know people, a lot of people keep notebooks and things, but I am not that organized. Never have been. I've always been kind of one of those people just kind of flies by the seat of my pants. <laughs> like when I'm baking. <laughs> It doesn't always turn out because I always try to make it a little better, you know. A little extra this, a little extra that. <laughs> if I'm making like blueberry muffins, it's like, well, if I had just, you know, another half cup of blueberries or a little bit more brown sugar or, <laughs> you know, and baking is really kind of a science. You got to keep the moisture and all that kind of the same so they don't slump <laughs> oh yeah I've ruined many a uh, many a cookie and muffin and but I love to bake breads and things okay let's see here there we go so the top is going to be different colors I think I'm going to go over these again with the sponge because I'm, like I said, kind of, kind of liking that. You know me, I don't like one solid color, so. Let's see, let's do the. Oops. You really aren't going to see. I mean, I'm, well, I guess you see the base colors, but I am going to go over here with stamps and things, so um, you really don't see, the, you know, the colors exactly. So, you know, you don't, shouldn't stress over them too much. Also, I was going to ask you guys if, um, if the volume is okay. I've had a couple people tell me that the volume, I need to turn the volume up, but the volume is, is all the way up on my phone. So I don't know, if the volume's too low, I wouldn't know how to fix that. I think, I think I, I probably just talked too low. Because the camera is, you know, the phone is, it's only two feet away from me, so it should be okay. But I'm wondering if the case, you know, sometimes I got this OtterBox case for my new phone um you know sometimes i wonder if that covers up the speaker a little bit i had this i had originally i had bought this waterproof case and gosh people people really had a hard time hearing me with that one i think i'm gonna add a little bit more of this orange down here in the bottom here Look at that. Ooh, I like that. Get 
that? Okay, so I've got a, just only a few bare spots left. What should I... Yeah, okay, so I need a little bit of this blue here, I think. This is turquoise. Um, let's see, that's... Uh, that might be speedball turquoise because I went to get my Amazon or Amazon when I went to get my Am uh, Amico uh, velvet underglazes. They were out of this turquoise, so I did have to buy a few speedball. I don't. It's. I try to buy the velvet underglazes because. The speedball, from what I understand, and I could be wrong. If I'm wrong, somebody can. Feel free to correct me. But one of the representatives reached out to me one time and she basically said that Speedball does have some um, flux in it. And so the flux will stick to the kiln shelf. And I had that issue with when I made some red birds, the whole the red birds sticking together when I had to buy some of their red. And I was not not happy and so um i guess i had said something about it on facebook and um one of the reps reached out to me and said they do their formula does have a little bit of flux in it which is fine there's you know obviously there's nothing wrong with speedball but i I like the paint on the bottom of mine, so I, I really um, would rather not have the flux in there. And sometimes my stuff touches each other, like when I'm stacking my red birds in the kiln, you know, they all lean up against each other. They're friends, you know. And they don't like to stick together, though. <laughs> okay, um, let's see. I'm going to add... This sponge, I don't even know where I got this. This is just one of those little, little tiny sea sponges. But this, uh, I've got one I uh, cut up. But because it's square, you know, it doesn't, I don't know if it have the same. I could try it later, maybe. Um, So, and also, you don't want any chunks of underglaze. So, if you get any chunks, um, just wait till it dries and then just get them, take them off. But it's kind of better. I think it's easier when it, when it dries and you can just flake them off. But I don't like when there's sharp lines. Though. Like, see when there's a sharp line there? I like um, I like when they all kind of blend in. So, like I said, this is going to be stamped on here, though. So, let's see, blue, yellow. Hmm. I guess I could do some chartreuse. This is chartreuse here that I'm using. That should be, well, that's probably, I could be speedball too. Uh, speedball, you know, a lot of, a lot of glaze companies, they, they basically use a lot of the same colors, name them the same colors, I should say. And, Like for the regular glazes, you know, a lot of them use the same recipes, but just name them there's something different. Because with the regular ones, you have to kind of kind of stay with it. It's kind of like baking. You you can't really move away from the ingredients too much because each ingredient will affect the color. This is avocado here. So I guess if since I have some avocado here, I should probably put it 
someplace else too, but I'm just gonna There we go. I think I should put it a little bit over here. Let's see. He was just outside, Chris. I don't like to ever have a, the color in one spot. So I think I'm going to add a little bit of avocado right here. Kind of blend this blue, this turquoise blue, in with the chartreuse. Because I got the turquoise here and the chartreuse here. So I put a little avocado here. Um, I started out with bright yellow. And that's what I didn't like. And this other yellow is, um, let's see what that is. What is that called? Just yellow. That's a speedball color, just yellow. It's a nice, soft, soft yellow. Okay, so I don't know what, hmm, I think, hmm, well, I think I am going to do the, do the bottom. The only problem with painting the bottoms, um, a lot of times, well, when you, I like to sand them sometimes at the end, and then I end up sanding off half the color, and then that looks kind of weird. But this one feels pretty soft. I've, I guess I've already sanded this. I try to smooth them down as much as I can when I'm trimming them. I, there we go. Someone was asking me, I believe it was Pam, about having an Etsy shop and trying to trying to manage an Etsy shop when you do a lot of shows. And and, and it's it's not so much um, well people who do more production pots, um, people who do people who are really I think anyway, who are very successful with an Etsy shop are people who sell, they make like 10 different things that are all, that are all the same. And they sell a hundred ashtrays or a hundred spoon rests or a hundred shot glasses or a hundred plate. You know, they, they make only 10 different items and then they list those 10 different items on Etsy. And so and, and of those items, they don't differentiate between, they don't variate much in um, how they paint them and everything. So they're, and they're smaller items. So they're easier to ship. They're less expensive. And let's say they, they list, you know, um, some plates. If they take 20 to a show, they still have 10 left over in stock. So I don't know if I'm explaining that right but they don't have a huge variation in their pieces. So they make 10 different listings and they just keep refilling those 10 different listings with the same description, same weight, size, and all that. And with my stuff, I found it very difficult because every piece is different. You know, and I, and, and I know I've thought about trying to make you know, like 10 different items that are all kind of the same and that's what I really you know should do and then list those items on Etsy but like with my items like I said everyone is different so you have to add a picture of every single one the weight the size and everything and then when you go to a show if you take all those items to the show you have to go back on Etsy and figure out what you, what you sold at the show so you can take it off of Etsy and 
So all that time and effort you've put in to weigh it, take pictures, the size, the weight, all that stuff, you just wasted all that time making that listing. And that, you know, that all takes time. And, and then one time I forgot to close my shop down while I went to a show and I sold the same item twice. So I had to tell the person that, I'll, you know, I'll make you another one. I can't guarantee it's going to look exactly the same. And then also Etsy wants you to do free shipping. Well, that's really difficult when you're making bigger items because, um, you know, if someone, I'm, I'm in the Midwest, so if someone from California buys something, it, it probably costs me $20, $20, $25 a ship. And then if someone, you know, nearby me buys something, then you're only talking about, you know, maybe $10. So there's such a huge uh, variation and could be in shipping charges that if you're doing free shipping and you know, and, and when people do free shipping, what they're really doing is they're just adding the cost onto the item. Um, so it's not, it's not really free shipping. So I try to say shipping included because I don't want to, you know, lie about what I'm doing. And people say, you know, well, you know, cause if, if someone sees an item on Etsy that's $60 and then they come to one of my shows and the same item is $40, then they'll be like, well, then you're lying. You're not, it's not really free shipping. And they're right. You know, so a lot of people who sell on, on Etsy are really having a problem with the free shipping thing. Cause you know, then you're competing with Amazon and, um, and that's just really, really tough because you know we're not we're not uh quite the size of amazon <laughs> and and if you don't offer the free shipping then they won't list your item they won't show it in their ads and try to promote your item <laughs> etsy's becoming more and more strict um in how they want you to sell very domineering but it's still probably the best and cheapest platform to sell on unless you have a huge following and you open up your own website. That's, you know, the, that's the ultimate thing is to have your own website by your own domain name and all that. Like I had mine in Shopify for a while and that's pretty, pretty good. That was about $30 a month that I had my own domain name and everything. Um, but you know, unless you have a huge following, you, you know, you're not, it's going to be a lot harder to draw people to your site. So I don't know if you can see these colors, but they, they are really, they are really pretty. I almost hate to stamp over them, but we will. <laughs> so I'll just put a zinc-free clear glaze over this when I'm done. Okay, so I'm going to, I'm going to add a little bit more to the lip here. I made a mess. I went down in here, so now I'm going to have to. Now I'm going to have to go down here with everything. Uh, so, you know, in in you know the shipping of the bigger pieces is it's pretty expensive, and then you know then you always run the risk of it breaking because you know, you've seen all the, how some of it's handled. <laughs> Depends if the delivery driver's having a good day or a bad day. And you know, those guys, gosh, they work endless hours and, but, um, so yeah, then if something breaks, then you got to remake it and get it shipped out and pray it doesn't break again. So that's why I guess what I'm getting to is Etsy, Etsy is still, it's people make a lot of money there. So it is a good way to do it. My suggestion would be to, um, 
make 10 items that are smaller in size, like a mug size, spoon rests, shot glasses, um, uh, you know, just smaller items that are cheaper and easier to ship, not, not as breakable, you know, um, And you can make some real money that way, especially if you get into wedding favors. Um, I know somebody was doing wedding favors and they were doing shot glasses. And, whew, they did really well there. I thought, thought about doing some shot glasses. I'm not much of a drinker, though, so. But yeah, I guess you don't have to, you don't have to, to drink to make shot glasses, right? Well, I used to bartend many, many moons ago, so I had my share back then. Let's see here. This, this spongy reminds me uh, years ago when Sponge painting was so popular. Some of you, uh, if you're younger, you, oh, I don't know, maybe sponge painting's coming back, but sponge painting was big when I was, just got married 40, 40 years ago. Um, I think I'm going to do a spritz this too. That would look cute. Oh, look at that. That looks cute. noisy. Let's see here. I like that color. I don't know. You like that spritz in there? Hmm. I'm not sure I'm liking it or not, but now I'm, I'm going to have to do it now. Otherwise i got to wipe it all out. So let's see here. This is going to be a fun bowl. some orange I'm not usually a big orange fan but I'm really liking it with a little bit of this red that's left in this tray here Let me dig some of that out I think I had some pink in here at one time and a little bit of the orange and then if I Clean my brush off a little bit and dip in this little bit of this yellow and a little bit of the bright yellow and then just oh, look at that see all the pretty colors coming up in there ah. yeah so we'll do some let's see here Oh, and I also took watercolors, or I still take watercolor classes every once in a while from a friend of mine who's a very, very talented um, lady. So I think it helps to take watercolor classes too, but it is a diff very, it is very different. Um, you know, mixing, mixing the colors is the same, but uh, the process of layering and watering down stuff is, is a little different. Let's see, what color am I missing here? I think yellow. I don't have any. I'm going to mix. Oh, I got some yellow over here that I had left over. There's some dark yellows and some light yellows. Some, I want some, there we go. I got some big splotches. I don't want them all the same size. I guess that looks okay. I 
think I need I think I need some bigger ones of the green here. There we go. Huh, what fun. Okay. I gotta be careful on the time though. What time is it? 45 minutes. Wow. It's already 45 minutes and I haven't even stamped anything yet. But I really like the outside of that bowl. I like that. Okay, so let's see. I'm going to be set this down here and be careful that I don't uh, let me move this over here. Oh, let's see. Lay this over here. There we go. And it's not directly down the table. Hopefully the foam won't pop off the, the stand here. Okay, so I also use um, one of these Minnesota Clay Company makes these potters pad. It's black. And I think you just go to, it's called uh, mnclay.com. I know the letters are backwards, but you can probably screenshot it. This is a, um, just a black underglaze pad. I've got like two or three. I think I got like three of them. I got one here too. So what I'm going to do is I have a bunch of rubber stamps because I used to, I went even bought more, but um, uh, my friend used to, was a stamping up rep and she stole, sold rubber stamps and oh my gosh, I got so many rubber stamps. So it's great now that I can use them again because I kept thinking, what am I going to do with all these rubber stamps? And, oh, wait a minute, why isn't that sticking? Let me try this pad here. This one I refilled, and sometimes when I refill them, um, it doesn't stamp as well. So let's see. Let's try this new one out, see if there's a difference. But most... Uh, most local clay suppliers, I think, carry them now. Sometimes when you buy the new rubber stamps, they don't uh, they don't accept the ink very well. So I just take my diamond core sanding pad here and just rough up the edge of it. For some reason, some work better than others. Yeah, there it's working better now. I don't know, maybe it's either the ink or... Prints a little more. But the older they get, it seems like um, they absorb it better. When they're bright, shiny, and new, they don't work as well. Okay, so... right here so when you put it down hold it in place and then just and like I said if it smudges it's you know it's not really a big deal there we go let me do another one here because I like that that writing on there I like when there's like the text and then you can go over the top of that I love that. I have I had one. I have one with uh, music on it, but I, I I took a whole bag of my stamps to the rec center where I work because I was demonstrating some of that, and I left them all there. So I guess I have to bring those home too, or just I think I'll put this here. Just kind of hold it down. Don't let it move around though. Always keep one hand holding it down. There you go. That one's a little bit darker. Okay. 
and I'm going to put some on the rim so I can bring the the design over from the bottom. Hope you can see okay. There we go. Okay. The only problem is now I got that wet. I have to be careful here. I don't smudge that. Let's see. I think this is a dry. Mm, let's look. I think that's pretty dry already. Yeah. So we'll set that down. Um. And let's see here. I'm with this cute little birdie. I'm gonna try this old stamp pad here. Now another trick that I do, uh, you can see it here, is I just paint on the table. Instead of the other stamp pads, which I've I've got some, they just I don't know, they just they don't um, work as well. Like I made I made a stamp pad out of a blank stamp pad. Just added my own underglazes to it. But if you just apply some to your table. I'll just leave mine there. So I'm just gonna lay my little my little birdie there. Keep my hands as clean as possible. Actually I'm gonna put another layer there. Kind of dried up a little faster than what I wanted it to. So we'll plop that down one more time, get a little bit wetter. Okay, let's give this a try. So when you're stamping, make sure you remember that your bowl is upside down. So when you're stamping, your stamps are upside down. There you go. Look at that. Worked good. Gosh, I should keep my try to keep your hands clean because otherwise you can do what I did. I just put uh, oops. I just put my fingerprints on here. I really don't want my fingerprints all over there. <laughs> okay. So yeah, so you can see the little birdie there. And I'm going to I'm going to actually paint that in too. So add some more color to the inside. Go ahead. Just a little bit of that blue. I think I'll add just a touch of water here to the corner. see we'll see how that looks um, okay so let's do I am gonna I gotta I always like to do my sun faces so I'm gonna get my applicator bottle out and this is what I hope there's enough I feel like there's pretty much ink in it this is black jet black underglaze from Amico in a Zyam bottle with a number 20 tip.
Oh, this is what I smeared. I smeared my lettering over there a little bit. Oh, that's okay. That's, I'm going to paint over it anyway. But... Feels like it's wanting to clog a little bit. I don't empty empty mine out. I just let it sit in here. I store it I store it upside down like that with the pin inside, and I usually don't have any problems at all. So I have a wet sponge over here. I wipe it on. Let's see here. I'm going to draw a flower here. My next show is coming up in September. I'll be at the Vina Galette Winery the third week of September. That's in Cincinnati, Ohio here if you're local. That's a that's three days. That's a big one for me. By the third day you have to practically carry me out of there on a stretcher though. It is long days and it's, you know, it's a lot. Whoops. Oh, jeez. Jeez of Louise, Lisa. It's hard to hold this in the camera. <laughs> Let's see if I can move this up a little bit. There we go. Let me move this back so it's hard. There we go. It's hard to remember to keep it in the camera. Keep it in view. Let me see. You see what I'm doing? Let's see here. Hmm. Um move some of this stuff out of the way. Move my sponge over here. You have to remember to pull away from you. That's the only problem. Like a lot of people will do this on the greenware. Then they fire it before they put the decoration on. And that is that is nice. Um, then you don't have this problem. I don't know. I've, I've never um, liked to do it on the greenware, though. You know, then you got to worry about the bowl cracking and breaking, and then you've done all that work and, the, and it cracked. Or if you want to wipe it off... Um, it smears into the clay and yeah, I never, I, I don't care to do it that way, but a lot of people, a lot of people do and it's, it turns out, you know, beautifully. Put a leaf there since it's green. Oops, Lisa, that's blue. That's not. <laughs> that's not your stamp pad. Okay. I'm not sure I'm liking that. Uh, 
that bird. I don't like how I added the blue in there. I'm going to try to take some out. Yeah, I think that'll be good. Because some of it might burn out. Just remember to keep your hands clean because that's the biggest thing is when you're trying to touch it and move it around, you're smearing, you're smearing some of your stuff. I think I'm going to put a big, I think I'm going to put a goldfish here. course he's upside down because so that when the bolt's turned upright we can see him Let me move this up a little bit oh, let's see there we go sorry if you're getting I don't know why you, it's like you move it up and it doesn't stay up I know I always have these issues with my <laughs> and I bought a new tripod and everything None of them seem to work the way I want them to work. Okay. So I've got one fishy there, so I think I'm going to add... i got to add another one. This, this uh, applicator bottle is not cooperating very well. Sometimes when it starts really acting up, I'll take all this stuff out and run it through a sieve. I guess it'll look okay. Put some goldfish in there. So let's see. I think I'm going to do another flower here. I like how the flowers look um, when I do them on here. So let's do another flower. Flowers are probably my favorite thing to do. Let's see if I can turn it this way so you can see what I'm doing. I'm going to clean my... Yeah, so it looks like my underglaze is getting a little thicker. So when you add underglaze to these bottles, uh, you water them down a little bit. At least I do. And so once the underglaze has been in there a while... You know, it tends to dry out a little bit. And I think that's what it's doing. It's drying out a little bit. So, probably the, I will, what I'll do is squeeze this all out into a bottle. Add some new stuff to it with a touch of water. Run it through a sieve and put it back in here again. I might add, um, I don't know, I might add some color to that. Wait till that dries and lightly go over that. I think I'm going to put another flower on here. One more. Let's see, I think I'll put one in over here.
Can you hear Archie, my dog, snoring under the table? <laughs> no. He's a little, well, I shouldn't say little. He's a Yorkie, but he's a full-size Yorkie. He's probably 15 pounds. He's not one of the toy Yorkies, that's for sure. I really start making stuff. I don't know where the time is gone, but I know I was sick for a while, so that that kind of put a damper on things. I just never really got my energy back up, but I've only got well, I got plenty of time left, but I really do want to make some pumpkins. I have to make some oil bottles. They're not my favorite thing to make, but I've had some requests for them, so I'm going to make some. Just a little more difficult with those is um, figuring out the shrinkage of the, of the opening to fit the spout. So that can be kind of a pain. All right, let's see. Oh, I know, I gotta... Let's see, where'd I go? I got this, here, I got, I got a love stamp. It says, love. It'd be nice if... Oh, everybody loved one another. No more war. Oh, poor people in Ukraine. Oh, goodness sakes. My heart just goes out to them. I think I'm going to, let's see, I might just do this one in blue too. Um, no, maybe I'll do one in purple. I don't know if I want to, although the blue would bring this blue around here, so maybe, maybe I will do it in blue. Um, what I'm doing is re-putting another layer of this blue on the table that I have. I'm going to lay, since I know you're at a camera shot. So I'm just kind of pressing this stamp down into the blue underglaze. It's not real, br it's not real bright, but let's see. I don't want it straight. Oh, there we go. That's not too bad. L O V E. And I know it's backwards on your. It's backwards, but trust me, it says, it says love. I like when the the black lines are thinner. So you do get a little bit thinner line when the underglaze is thicker. Well. I always thought it was when it was thicker because um, it doesn't spread out. But you know, if you move it faster too, it it 
it tends to stay thinner. But I like the thinner lines. The thinner, the better for me. What I, you know, what I prefer. Let's see here. Uh, let me find a few more stamps. I've got a zillion here, but. Maybe I'll do another bluebird. Let me put some more blues down on the table. I'll do another bluebird. I do like the birds. Well, I could just draw a bird. Wouldn't have to necessarily. One thing nice about doing shows, they are much more work. A lot of people just prefer to sell on Etsy. But um, you can, you know, sell so much in one day. And you're meeting people and no shipping. You know, you sell the item, they take it home. You don't got to worry about it breaking. So there's definitely a, a plus side to selling at shows too. What I'm doing is I'm trying to kind of smush down that blue is kind of thick so I'm just kind of smushing it down a little bit. I don't want it to be, uh, I don't want any chunks. Um, let's see here. Looking at what else I can put on here. Hmm. Maybe I'll do another sun. Happy sun. So I kind of go by what color I've got there and what would look good there. <sighs> Try not to smear what else I've done. That's probably the hardest part too, is not smearing unless you're working, you know, around the bowl in one direction. But I don't really, I don't know, I don't really do that but I probably should and you don't have to worry about always smearing what else you have on there um, um, let me think here I wish I had the rest of my stamps here I have I have a lot of stamps, but I'm not seeing what I what I like. So I think what I'll do is draw some little poppies here. Put some little petals down here. I'm just cleaning off my oops. If you can see what I'm doing here. Just kind of constantly cleaning off the tip of my applicator bottle. These can be kind of uh, frustrating to work with at first. My class always said, you make it look so easy, Lisa. And it just, it just takes, you know, practice. Because believe me, when I first started doing these, 
Oh, that was frustrating. <laughs> oh, I was ready to give up. But, you know, a good applicator bottle does make a difference. And, and I don't know if it's... Um, and it's not, almost not so much the applicator bottle, I think, as it is um, what you have in there. Having the right formula. Um, I think it's really important to add just a little bit of water to make it flow easier. Um, let's see. I'm trying to think of other things to add on to here. Oh, and gotta remember not not to bump those poppies. Well, sometimes I think I add too much, but I think I'll add some leaves. So even though I'm at, not at the lake, I'm getting getting things done at the house. I organ I started organizing my studios yesterday. So I started cleaning some things up. I don't I don't like when my studio is a mess. I think it's hard to concentrate when my studio's a mess. That doesn't mean it's really that it's clean, but it's, you know, but I know where everything's at. So if you hold your bottle more parallel to the surface you're drawing on, I think that helps too, because you're not you're not digging in with your tip of your. Nozzle. Sorry, I got distracted. I was looking at the time and. I've probably lost a lot of people by now, but that's okay. So I'll fire this and I will show this, um, sorry, but at a later date. And I'm going to put a, oh, I, you know, I thought I had a butterfly. Is that a butterfly? Um. Oh, I got a little crab. Oh, he's cute. And I'll, what I'll do is after this and I'm done, I'm going to put a clear glaze on it and then I'll fire it. And then I will post the picture at the top of the video. Because the pictures that, the pictures that, um, YouTube picks, picks, gosh darn it, I can't open that. Oh, it's already open, that's why. Uh, the pictures that YouTube picks for the video cover. Oh my god, they always pick the ugliest darn thing. I don't know. They say it's computer generated, but sometimes I wonder about that if it's really computer generated. Because I don't know how the computer could pick out such ugly, ugly pictures. It's always me with my mouth hanging open or some ugly picture of the bowl that's not done. And, um, uh, and then it's, it's hard for me to go back and add them because it has to be, you know, the right pixels and the right megapixels or, let's see, this is a little watery, so I'm 
not sure this will work. It's a cute little crab. I don't know. I think it's uh. See, this is a new one too. I haven't used yet, so the stuff doesn't like to stick to it. Uh, that might be okay. Let me add a little more. Right here. Yeah, he turned out pretty good. But yeah, I'm gonna sand him. I'm gonna sand him down. You can kind of see, but he didn't. He didn't turn out. He looks okay, but he didn't, didn't turn out the greatest. Didn't turn out the greatest. I just add a little bit of color to his body. Just kind of a because I think it's hard to tell what he is. good okay so oh I gotta do something else with the well I don't know I think I'm gonna let the rim go so I think I filled it out pretty much so what do you think I think I could have done better on the fish. The, oh, I'm going to add one more of these. This. I'm not doing very well with the applicator bottle today. It's not. It's not cooperating, but that's just the way the whole week's been going for me. You know, you have one of those weeks where the stars are not aligned or something. My mind is elsewhere. I do think that little crab there is cute. So that's how it looks. What do you think? I do like the inside. Because it, it, sometimes it looks just so stark white. And that's pretty. So I will paint this with a. Let me see if I can turn this up without it falling off like I did the last two times. <laughs> Oh, hang in there, hang in there. There we go. <laughs> it doesn't like to stay up. Oh, hang on, hang on. Way there we go. There we go. <laughs> see my, see probably saw my ceiling and everything, right? All right. So I put my stamps away. Now I gotta get on the wheel. This is the last piece of bisqueware I had to to glaze. So I gotta get busy making because I'm. I'm way behind. Yeah, I don't have any. I don't have any. I know I have some bisqueware at um, the rec center where I teach. I can bring that home and, and glaze it. 
but I really need to start making. So I want to try to make some neat bowls. Um, I gotta make some more red birds. Uh, gosh, these take a these take a little while longer there too. Um, pumpkins, lanterns. I love lanterns. They're kind they're, they're kind of a pain too though. Um, you know, just all the cutouts because and it's not the cutouts aren't that hard. It's when the you gotta go into the clay's the right um, moisture has the right moisture level. Um, leather hard is too hard. Um, so you know just it, it just depends you don't want it to to move but yet you want it stiff enough to cut out and not you know not smash it and you want it easy enough to cut out so it's not you know you're not cracking it either when you're trying to cut these cut the pieces out of lanterns so anyway so i'll do some lanterns um but lanterns and mugs and i used to do a lot of bird baths i need to do some more bird baths anyway uh, that's about it, and I hope you enjoyed it, and if you liked it, please subscribe, um, please share, and if you have any questions, let me know. I'd be more than happy to answer them, and since I'm not at the lake this week, I'll probably be doing another video, and I was hoping to do a nice, fun video from the lake. <laughs> that would have been, it's so pretty down there, but that's just not to be. Anyway, have a great week, and um Thanks for watching, and I pre appreciate all the, the kind comments. You guys are just, you're just so nice. <laughs> and I will see you in the next video. Thanks. See if I can turn it off without it falling. Yay.